statistics question ke now totipotent cells in the epidermis of erythema are a supporting cells b mucocytes c basal cells d receptor cells you know uh, in erythema both in uh, epidermis and uh, that is ectoderm okay uh, that is you take the cross section of the body wall you know in erythema you find outer cuticle below cuticle there is a layer called epidermis or uh, hypodermis you know below that there is a dermis or base membrane below dermis there is a musculature it has outer saccular muscles and inner long terminal muscles now in the epidermis region uh, there are about uh, four kinds of cells are there columnar cells that form bulk of the epidermis then gland cells b number c basal cells number 4 receptor cells so among these the basal cells act as totipotent cells so 36th question correct answer is c basal cells 37th question in a mature earthworm ct are present in which of the following a buccal segment b anal segment c second segment d clitellum so in earthworm mature earthworm here now the ct are absent in first segment last segment and clitellum ct are absent in first segment last segment and clitellum rest of the segments uh, there is uh, either perikeetan arrangement or lumbricin arrangement of ct here now perikeetan arrangement ct are evenly distributed around the annulus you ferritima megascolex dravida and all you find perikeetan arrangement octocretin arrangement four pairs of ct are there okay in each segment here now that you find in octocretus uh, and uh, lumbricus okay you find octocretus lumbricus and utyphus you find octocretin arrangement so in the question is asking about segment in which ct are present so buccal segment in which of the following uh, ct are present buccal segment then anal segment second segment and d clitellum so buccal segment that is the first segment is also called buccal segment does not have ct clitellum ct are lost in mature earthworm anal segment also ct are absent so the answer for 37th question is second segment so the correct answer for 37th question is second segment next question 38th you know i shall read the question for you four pairs of ct are present in each segment in a ferritima b megascolex c lumbricus d hirudinaria now i made a mention already you know the ct there are two methods of arrangement of ct the first one is called perikeetan arrangement in perikeetan arrangement you know the ct are evenly distributed around annulus ct are evenly distributed around annulus that is called perikeetan arrangement perikeetan arrangement is present in ferritima megascolex and dravida another arrangement is octocretin arrangement octocretin arrangement is also called lumbricin arrangement in lumbricin or octocretin here now the ct are arranged in four pairs two on lateral sides and two pairs on ventral side two on lateral sides and two pairs on ventral side it's called octocretin because eight ct are there okay then lumbricin because present in lumbricus the examples are lumbricus octocretus and utyphus in all three of them you find octocretin so in the question is saying four pairs of ct are present in a ferritima b megascolex c lumbricus d hirudinaria so 38th question correct answer is c lumbricus 39th question is read out the question for you cuticle of earthworm is a multicellular b unicellular c non cellular d mesodermal cuticle in earthworm it is non cellular deposited with polysaccharides mucin and chitin polysaccharides mucin and chitin it is non cellular secreted by the basal cells of epidermis so 39th question correct answer is uh, c non cellular now question number 40 the part of the alimentary canal of earthworm with calciferous glands a intestine b pharynx c stomach d buccal cavity now in ferritima the uh, alimentary canal Uh, consists of mouth uh, pharynx esophagus 
then gizzard, stomach and intestine. Intestine is in turn dividable into pre-tiflosolar pre region, tiflosolar region and post-tiflosolar region. Now, in the stomach, apart from proteolytic glands, you know, calciferous glands are also present. These calciferous glands secrete calcium ions uh, to neutralize acidic nature of humic acid. Earthworm is a detritivore and it is fond of the detritus matter deposited with humic acid. So, when it takes large amount of uh, humic acid here now, the acidity in the body that is digestive tract goes up and it may damage the digestive tract. So, in order to minimize the acidity or neutralize the acidity here now, calciferous glands secrete calcium ions. So, they are present in stomach. 40th question correct answer is C stomach. Question number 41, intestinal CK project out from the elementary canal of erythema in A 15 segment, B 35 segment, C 26 segment, D 8 segment. In ferritima, intestine is present from 15 segment onwards. 15th to last segment is intestine. 15th segment to 26th segment, it is called pre tiflosolar region. 27th to last 23rd or 25th is called tiflosolar region. Remaining uh, 23 or 25 segments which are there towards the posterior region are called post tiflosolar region. Post tiflosolar region corresponds to rectum. Tiflosolar region, tiflosol is present that enhances the rate of absorption. Then in 26th segment here now, intestine gives rise to a pair of blind outgrowths called intestinal CK. They bring about digestion of cellulose by secreting amylase. Okay? So, they help in digestion of carbohydrates by secreting amylase. So, intestinal CK arises from elementary canal that is intestine in 26th segment. So, 41 question correct answer is C. Now, question number 42, in earthworm, the area of absorption of digested food is increased by A rectum, B villi, C tiflosol, D intestinal CK. Now, just now I made a mention here now, tiflosol which lies in the tiflosolar region enhances the rate of absorption of digested food. So, 42nd question correct answer is C. Now, question number 43, in earthworm, septal nephridia occur from A 15 segment, B third segment, C 26 segment, D second segment. In earthworm, three kinds of nephridia are present. They are number one, integumentary nephridia. Integumentary nephridia are also called mironephridia. They are present from third segment onwards. Uh, then uh, in each segment about 200 to 250 are present. These integumentary nephridia are, the are exonephric and they are closed. Then uh, pharyngeal nephridia are in fourth, fifth and sixth segment. Pharyngeal nephridia are called tufted nephridia or peptonephridia. They are enteronephric and closed. Then septal nephridia are present from 15 segment onwards. Each segment about 80 to 100 are present. Then septal nephridia are open and enteronephric. So, 50, 43rd question, septal nephridia occur from 15 segment onwards. So, 43 question correct answer is A. Now, question number 44. Tufted nephridian earthworm are A. Typical nephridia, B. Septal nephridia, C. Pharyngeal nephridia, D. Integumentary nephridia. The pharyngeal nephridia are present in 4th and 5th and 6th segment, 4th, 5th and 6th segment. Uh, bunches of pharyngeal nephridia are there in each segment, that is why they are called tufted nephridia. And so, the 44th question correct answer is C. Pharyngeal nephridia. Next, 45, nerve ring in earthworm encircles A, esophagus, B, intestine, C, buccal cavity, D, pharynx. In earthworm here now, the nerve ring is formed by a pair of suprapharyngeal ganglions and a pair of subpharyngeal ganglions. Suprapharyngeal ganglions are also called cerebral ganglions. They lie above the pharynx in third segment and they are connected to the subpharyngeal ganglions which are present in fourth segment by circumpharyngeal connectives. So, they are present, the suprapharyngeal and subpharyngeal as the name indicates, they are present around the pharynx. So, 20, 45th question correct answer is D, pharynx. Now, 46th question, blastopore is opening of A, blastocele, B, archenteron, C, segmentation cavity, D, primary body cavity. You know. Blastopore, the terminal opening of elementary canal is called blastopore. In protostomes, it transforms into mouth and in deuterostomes, it transforms into anus. So, it is the opening of elementary canal or archenteron that is primitive gut. So, 46th question, correct answer is B, archenteron. 
read out the question here now identify the pseudo sulomid group from the following a rotifera b tenophora c platyelminthes d annelida now rotifera there are about seven pseudo sulomid phyla 6 to 7 rotifera kynorinka nematomorpha nematoda acanthocephala entopracta okay about 6 to 7 of them are there identified as pseudo sulomid phyla all pseudo sulomid phyla are placed under superphylum ask helminthes so among these options the correct answer is a Rotifera, that is 47th question, correct answer is A. Next, 48th question, movement of internal organs are restricted in A, roundworms, B, earthworms, C, flatworms, D, starfish. Now, in flatworms, that is platyhelminthes, now, the entire body cavity is deposited with parenchyma or mesenchyme. As a result of that, the in movement of the body parts is restricted. It is one of the disadvantages of A, C, low mates, you know. So, 48th question, correct answer is C, flatworms. Next, 49th question here now. Spot the eusilomid group with radial symmetry here now. A, annelida, B, echinodermata, uh, C, nidaria, D, mollusca. Now, if you see these options here now, annelids are schizocelomates but with bilateral symmetry. Nidarians are they are not eucelomate, they do not have any coelomate all. D, that is molluscans are schizocelomate, but they are bilaterally symmetrical. So, the left out option that is B, echinodermata, they are eucelomates, where the adults are pentamerous radially symmetrical. So, 49th question correct answer is B, echinodermata. The 50th question here now, triploblastic animals with sac-like gut are placed in the phylum A, nematoda. B. Nidaria, C. Porifera, D. Platyhelminthes. We have mentioned already you know, in Platyhelminthes, gut is sac like with a single opening, that is, anus is absent, only one, that is, mouth is present here now. So, 50th question correct answer is D. Platyhelminthes. Now, 51 question here you now, metazoans without nerve cells and sensory cells are A. Sponges, B. Jellyfish, C. Starfish, D. Sea anemones. The metazoans here now, Poriferans are the first formed metazoans say now, they are with cellular grade of organization, but uh, without any sensory cells and nerve cells, as a result there is no coordination between the cells, cells cannot form tissues, organs and organ systems. So, 51 question correct answer is A, sponges. Now, question number 52, identify the biradially symmetrical group from the following, A, tenophora, B, porifera, C, nematoda, D, arthropoda. Tenophores are biradially symmetrical, where the animal is divisible into identical halves by two vertical planes which are perpendicular to each other. Those two planes cut the animal in oroeboral axis. One cuts the animal along the long axis of the mouth, the other one cuts the animal along the short axis of the mouth. So, 52 question correct answer is A, Tenophora. 53 question here now. Which of the following animals exhibit protoplasmic grade of organization? A. All metazoans, B. Only eumetazoans, C. Protozoans, D. Poriferans. You know. Protoplasmic grade of organization is present in protozoans. You know. Protozoans are referred to as protoplasmic organized or acellular organized or unicellular organized animals. You know. Von Siebold called them unicellular, Dobel and Hyman called them protoplasmic organized or acellular animals. So, 53 question correct answer is C. Protozoa. 54th question, the functional body cavity is hemocele in A. Annelida, B. Cardata, C. Arthropoda, D. Rotifera. Now, see these options here now. Annelida, they are true schizocelomates without any modification. Cardates, they are enterocelomates here now. Rotifers are pseudocelomates. In Arthropoda, schizocelum is present, but it is modified into hemocele here now. So, 54th question correct answer is C. Arthropoda. Now, 55 question here now, complete gut with both mouth and anus developed for the first time in A, A coelomates, B, pseudocelomates, C, schizocelomates, D, enterocelomates. A complete gut with both mouth and anus noticed for the first time in pseudocelomates, that is in nematelminthes here now. So, 55th question correct answer is B, okay. 55th question correct answer is B, pseudocelomates. Now, 56th question here now, which of the following triploblastic group developed Asymmetry secondarily, A. Cephalopods, B. Echinoderms, C. Gastropods, D. Arthropods. Now, the gastropods belong to phylum mollusca. Uh, 
they are basically bilaterally symmetrical, but symmetry is lost here now because of torsion here now. Because of torsion here now, the adults become asymmetrical. Adults become asymmetrical here now. Rotation of the visceral mass at 180 degrees angle in anti-clockwise direction is called torsion. Because of torsion here now, adults lose their bilateral symmetry and become asymmetrical. So, 56th question correct answer is C, gastropoda. 57th question here now, match the following. List 1 and list 2 you have. List 1, A, radial symmetry, B, biradial symmetry, C, asymmetry, D, bilateral symmetry. List 2, 1, C, anemone, 2, hydra, 3, amoeba, 4, starfish, 5, cockroach. We will try to find out the reasons here now. A, radial symmetry. You know very well, radial symmetry is noticed in nidarians and tenophores. Okay. Then, uh, so among these here now, the correct answer uh, is Hydra. That is, Hydra is given here now. Hydra belongs to Nidaria. So, it's 2. The next B, second option, if you see here now, biradial symmetry. Biradial symmetry is noticed in anthozoans and tenophores. C uh, anemone is given here now. So, B, first option. Then, C, if you see, asymmetry. Gastropods are asymmetrical and amoeba, paramecium, they are also asymmetrical here now. So, among these options here now, amoeba is given. So, third option is the correct for C. Next, D, bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry among these is noticed in cockroach. Cockroach belongs to arthropoda. All arthropods are bilaterally symmetrical. So, fifth option. So, the correct answer is A2, B1, C3 and D5. So, 57th question correct answer is A. Now, 58th question here now, mass the following you have list 1 and list 2. List 1 you have A, chlorogogen cells, B, gizzard, C, nephridia, D, ceramic fluid. List 2, number 1, grinding mill, number 2, hydrostatic skeleton, number 3, excretion, number 4, osmoregulation. Try to find out here now, A, chlorogogen cells. These chlorogogen cells are present in peritima. They arise from uh, visceral layer of the body cavity. They hang into the body cavity to collect nitrogenous waste from the ceramic fluid. Once they are deposited with nitrogenous waste here now, they get uh, detached from the epithelium and fall into the body cavity to form ileocytes. Apart from excretion, they also render some more functions like uh, they remove silicates from the uh, gut cavity. Then uh, number two, they distribute the digested food to the entire body in the form of glycogen granules and lipids here now. Number four, they also store reserve food. So, like that they render several functions. That is why they are said to be analogous to liver of higher animals here now. So, among these here now, excretion would be the correct option for chlorogogen cells. So, third one. Then next B option if you see, gizzard. Gizzard in earthworm lies in, uh, lies in uh, eighth segment. It is made up of only circular muscles, does not have long tail muscles and internally it is lined by chitinous cuticle and main function of gizzard is to macerate the food. So, the, among these options uh, now, grinding mill would be the first uh, correct option for gizzard. The next nephridia, nephridia in earthworm are ectodermal in origin and uh, they are three types of nephridia as I made a mention earlier. Pharyngeal nephridia, integumentary nephridia and septal nephridia. Uh, the main function of nephridia is osmoregulation besides excretion. Osmoregulation besides excretion. So, here, uh, okay, osmoregulation option is given. So, fourth is the correct answer. Next, D, silamic fluid. Silamic fluid in thiretima postuma helps in locomotion by acting as hydrostatic skeleton. So, among these, the second option is the correct. So, the correct answer is A3, B1, C4 and D2. So, the 58th question correct answer is C. 
Now, 59th question here now. In Theritima, forests of Nephridia are located in the segments A, 12, 13, 14, B, 14, 15, 16, C, 10 and 15, D, 15 to last. Now, this uh, uh, integumentary nephridia present in the Clitella region are referred to as forests of nephridia. Integumentary nephridia are present from third segment onwards. In each segment about 200 to 250 integumentary nephridia are there. But in Clitellum that is in 14th, 15th and 16th segment, 2000 to 2500 integumentary nephridia are present which are referred to as forests of nephridia. So, 59th question correct answer is B, 14th, 15th and 16th segment that is Clitellum. So, 59th question correct answer is B. Now, 60th question, total number of hearts in Theritima Postuma, A4, B8, C3, D6. Theritima Postuma has 4 pairs of lateral hearts say now, okay, 4 pairs of lateral hearts say now, they are present in uh, 7th, 9th, 12th and 13th segment here now, present in 7th, 9th, 12th and 13th segment. So, the 4 pairs, first 2 pairs that is 7th and 9th are called lateral hearts, 12th and 13th are called lateral esophageal hearts, uh, 7th and 9th. Uh, the function of lateral hearts is to carry blood from dorsal blood vessel to ventral blood vessel. But that of 12th and 13th, besides collecting blood from dorsal blood vessel, they also collect blood from supraesophageal and discharge the blood into ventral blood vessel. So, altogether there are 4 pairs of lateral hearts or 8 lateral hearts are present, 7th, 9th, 12th and 13th segment. So, 60th question correct answer is B, 8. Now, question number 61. Shizocelomate group without hemocyl is A. Mollusca, B. Arthropoda, C. Cardata, D. Amelida. Now, in Mollusca Arthropoda, the coelom is shizocelom basic color but is modified into hemocyl due to presence of open blood vascular system. Amelida uh, is the uh, shizocelomate group with a distinct shizocelom without any modification because they have got closed blood vascular system. So, 61 question correct answer is D. Amelida. 62 question here now, reduced cytosylum is present in A. Amelida, B. Mollusca, C. Rotifera, D. Echinodermata. Now, Mollusca, cytosylum is modified into hemocyl, so it is reduced. So, 62 question correct answer is B. Mollusca. 63 question, in which of the following phyla, coelom is formed from primitive gut? A. Echinodermata, B. Platyhelminthes, C. Ascohelminthes, D. Amelida. Now, in platyhelminthes it is acelom, ascohelminthes it is pseudocelom, amelida it is schizocelom, echinodermata it is from elementary canal that is why it is called enterocelom. So, 63 question correct answer is A, echinodermata. 64th question, the phylum in which blastocele persists in adults, A, amelida, B, cardata, C, nematoda, D, platyhelminthes. Now, in pseudocelomates say now, the blastocele is still persistent. That is why pseudocelum is re referred to as persistent blastocele or leftover blastocele or remnant of blastocele here now. So, the among these options, C is the nematoda, correct option. So, 64th question, correct answer is C, nematoda.